Hey, what's up, hello? Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Kayla, and today I have a nice sit down, or I guess rather I'm standing up, so stand up video for you. Hey guys, I hope you guys are all doing well. So today I wanted to just sit down and chit chat with you guys a little bit about some fun ways to mix up and spruce up your wardrobe while you're stuck at home. So my favorite way to spruce up my wardrobe ordinarily is to go thrifting. I like to just donate some clothes. I pretty much always donate clothes when I go thrifting because I like to try to not crowd my wardrobe so much. Um, so when I grow out of things, I just go ahead and donate it, grow out of it whether stylistically or actually it doesn't fit me anymore. I go ahead and donate it and then I go and thrift some new pieces for my wardrobe. Obviously, with everything going on right now, outside of online thrifting, there really isn't an option to go thrifting. Thrift stores are closed. While I do love a good online thrift shop, it's not always my favorite thing to do. I really do enjoy the process of trying things on. It can be frustrating to buy something, love how it looks, but then it gets here and it doesn't fit. I'm trying to avoid that issue and just doing some fun things with some DIY supplies, around my house to sort of spruce up my wardrobe. This is a good way to be sort of budget friendly. Pretty much all of these projects are inexpensive as all get out and they probably include supplies you already have at home. If you don't have the supplies, they're all pretty cheap. I tried to keep it as money conscious as I could, but of course we didn't want to sacrifice style. So some of these things could be a bit more expensive if you want it to be more elaborate. Now, without further ado, here are eight little tips to help you spruce up your wardrobe while you're stuck at home. Okay, tip number one, embroidery. Now this is a skill that requires a lot of practice. I recently picked up embroidery and a good friend of mine, Natalie, she does some really beautiful, lovely embroidery. Um, so it's been fun to sort of get the hang of doing it. But of course, I would say it's gonna take me several weeks to get it down pat. But I did try my hand on embroidering a pair of Converse. I saw this trend going around on Pinterest I just thought it was super, super cute. I absolutely love how it looks to have embroidered little flowers around the Converse symbol on a pair of high tops. So that's a really fun way to spruce up your wardrobe. You can embroider shoes, hats, t-shirts, collars. That is one of my personal favorites that I've been seeing around. It's this really cute, whimsical, sort of fairy tale like look, doll like look maybe even, with little woodland creatures embroidered on either Peter Pan or gingerbread collars. And I absolutely love how it looks. Even on a regular collared shirt, I think it could look stunning. Or if you want to be even more adventurous, you can embroider on some denim, which is a little bit more difficult because it's harder, so you're gonna want a thicker needle. But there's so many tutorials online for just simple stitching. A lazy daisy stitch is a really good first flower if you want to just try it out. Honestly, it's a really satisfying result to see how nicely it comes out. So that's one way to just sort of add a little bit of personality. It's super customizable. You can pick what color string you want to use. You can pick what style of flower. You can pick the type of stitch you want to do. You can choose whatever item you want it to be on. You don't even have to do flowers. You can embroider flames. You can embroider animals. You can embroider yourself. Words. Which I, words are hard, but you can do it. So yeah, there's so many options when it comes to embroidery. It is honestly a world of endless possibilities. Number two, the trend that never goes out of style, tie-dye. I actually tie-dyed a ton of stuff a few weeks back. A bandana, a tank top, a sweatshirt. That was my favorite thing that I tie-dyed so far. And a pair of socks. I love the bandana I have. I chose this very mid-century 70s color scheme with oranges and blues and purples. It was a color scheme I absolutely adore. And this is another really fun way to just sort of make a unique, personalized piece. Tie-dyeing is traditionally done with t-shirts, but I really do think try tie-dyeing a bandana, and if you have a ton of dye, because trust me, it will take a ton of dye, get a sweatsuit. Tie-dye a sweatsuit. I think an all, like a monochromatic sweatsuit that is all tie-dyed would look so cute. So like pink monochrome tie-dye sweatshirt and sweatpants combo will look so cute, or even a lounge set. You can do shorts and a tank, or a cropped sweatshirt, or a cropped crew neck. I think that will look really, really cool. And these are great options for just occupying your time, having a good time, playing around with some paint and dye, and also customizing a piece that you're gonna absolutely love and that nobody else will have. It's a really great way to take some old things that you have in your wardrobe that you're kind of tired of and repurpose them and give them new life. Number three is perhaps something that is not as popular. I'm not really sure how trendy it is, but paint splattering and bleach splattering or dip dyeing are 
totally an option. Now, I actually think a fun way to dip dye would be to take a pair of jeans and you dip dye like the bottom part of the jean and then transfer that into dye after you bleached it and you've like obviously let the bleach set and washed it out and everything and then dip it into some dye so that you have this cool sort of like fading. I'm picturing purple. I don't know why, but like a good dark denim fades into like a nice bright purple. I feel like that would look really cool, and especially if you have like a bell bottom situation going on. That would be a really, really fun look. And also, hella freaking 60s. So that's actually a really cool option. But of course, you can also do traditional paint splatter and bleach splatter. I've done this before on a flannel that I really love. I've also done it on a denim shirt that I have no idea where it is. I have a denim shirt, like a denim long sleeve shirt thing that I painted save rock and roll on the back of and then paint and bleach splattered it and then put a fallout boy patch on the side. And then I also have one that I just went ahead and put Gryffindor on the back and put a Gryffindor patch on the side and that one's a flannel. So the options are really endless. You can do this with jeans, you can do this with shirts, you can do it with jackets. And I think that is a really cool way to, again, breathe new life into a piece of clothing that maybe doesn't inspire you so much anymore. Okay, number four, this one is maybe a bit more unconventional, is adding trimmings to things. So trimmings are those things like lace and like the thick wraps of lace or beading or fringe things of the sort that you can put around either like the bottom of something or you can even lay it around the top so you can maybe if you have like a black tank top that you love but you know you don't find yourself reaching for it maybe you want to spruce it up a little bit you can get some black fringe and go ahead and you can use liquid stitch though i would advise being careful if you're going to use a marker the liquid stitch will make the marker appear very bright so i caution against doing that of course follow any directions that the liquid stitch has on it but you can also sew things on as well. So that's a cool way to spruce up your wardrobe as well. Like I said, you can add some like leather fringe, you can add some feathers. And I think that would look really cute. Another thing you could do is add lace to the bottom of a dress or a skirt. You can add fringe to the back of a jacket and make it look a bit more like boho or, you know, cowboy western style. So yeah, the possibilities are truly endless with that one. Finding a good trim that you really like, they're really easily accessible actually. You can find them at your local Walmart if you have one near you. Target might have some. I don't really know what West Coast Targets look like. I live on the East Coast and pretty much Walmart is the catch-all for everything. And I think craft stores are by and large pretty much closed at the moment. But if push came to shove, you could order some online. Though I do recommend being really conscious of how much you are utilizing online shopping as well as being super cautious when receiving packages in the mail. Make sure you're sanitizing them um, and just being extra safe and smart. Okay, number five. So this is something I've always wanted to try and still haven't but really want to is make my own collar. So I know you can buy like the collar attachment things like a Peter Pan collar or a gingerbread collar or even like just the regular B collars or square collars. You can buy attachments of those. I really, really, really want to try my hand in making one and then embroidering some really beautiful woodland creatures on them. I've seen inspo pictures of this everywhere. Just little collared shirts with like foxes and wolves and squirrels and owls and stuff on it, which I absolutely love and adore. I just love the whimsy in the world and that absolutely screams whimsical to me. So this is a really fun project that you could spend some time doing and the cool thing is is if you make it an attachable or detachable collar you can use it with so many outfits and shirts. So it makes it super versatile and that's a really fun way to spice up your wardrobe all the time. You can take a lot of outfits that you have known and loved for many, many years and add a new element to it. Switch it up and make it a new fave. And again, if you're not really great at embroidery, other things that you can do is sew on or glue on some pearl details or rhinestones. You can bedazzle things. Bedazzling is cool, people. Bedazzle things. You can lay overlay some lace on it. There are so many, so many different options. You can even make a tie-dye collar that would be fun if you like laid a tie-dye collar over top of like a plain shirt i think that would be really lovely number six make a patch jacket this is actually a project i've been wanting to do for absolute ages so i'm a humongo rock and roll fan i listen to a ton of classic rock current contemporary rock a lot of rock so i would love to create some sort of rock and roll patch jacket, which I think is a great fun thing to be able to do to breathe new life into an old denim jacket. And it doesn't even have to be a denim jacket. I actually started adding some patches to this pink denim jacket that I have here. 
I just have this Panic at the Disco patch right here, and I would love to one day add some more patches to the back or even to a different jacket, but there are so many ways that you can breathe new life into old pieces of clothing, and like I said, a patch jacket is a really fun option. They're gonna give you that vintage feel. It's not something that a lot of people are wearing these days, so it'll give that very unique, very vintage feel, and by making it yourself, you get to insert pieces of your own personality by choosing every single patch that goes on it, and make it as unique and personalized to you as you want. Number seven, similar to a patch jacket, this is now a patchwork jacket. So another thing I've wanted to try for the longest time is cutting the sleeves off of a jean jacket and sewing on the sleeves of a flannel. I think that would look so fun. So basically it's like a denim vest with flannel sleeves sewn on. And I just think it gives that really cool rock and roll grunge sort of vibe. Something again that I really love. I really love playing with different styles. I always say I don't really have a specific style category that I fit into. I really just gravitate to whatever my mood is. So like today I'm wearing this really cute, flirty, girly, pastel blue shirt. Some days I wear a lot of, most of the time I wear a lot of pink. Other days I'm wearing sporty looks. Other days I'm wearing grungier looks. So it's really just whatever, you know, whatever the world is wanting me to feel that day. I just let my emotions sort of rule how I dress. But anyway, so this would be a fun thing to do. You can also do this with bell bottoms. So I've seen this sort of circulating around Pinterest. People sort of patchworking different denims with cotton materials and turning them into these really trendy, cool looking bell bottoms. This is a project I 100% want to try. I think it looks really cool and I have been on the hunt for a pair of bell bottoms for the last two years and just haven't been able to find a pair that I absolutely love and am willing to spend the amount of money they're selling for. So this might be a fun alternative if you are also into the whole bell bottom look. Doing a patchwork sort of a bell bottom is a really fun little project you could do. You can also do this with a dress or just a flannel or a t-shirt. You can cut one of them in half. Let's say you have two of the same dress, just different colors or different patterns. You can literally cut them in half, sew them together, and then you have this really cool mix matchy patchwork dress. I actually did this with a dress last year. I bought it, it didn't fit, but it was so cute. So I went and bought some flannel fabric and it was like a green and blue flannel in the front. And then I bought some blue and gray fabric and just sort of sewed the gray fabric on the side. So it was green and blue on the front and back. And then sort of follow the curvature of my body with the gray and I thought it was a really cool project. So it's definitely something you can do that's a bit more intense of a project than just sewing on sleeves from one item to the other or sewing on little bell bottoms at the bottom. But if you are feeling ambitious and you have some time to kill, that is a fun project that I recommend you try out. Finally, number eight, moving into the accessories realm, try making some clay jewelry. A good friend of mine, Kelly Jane, she actually makes her own clay jewelry and sells it online. So if you're not interested in making your own, you can absolutely check out her website. I'll leave it linked down below. I think I own like five or six pairs of her earrings. And honestly, I will probably buy more. I just find them to be so beautiful. They're lightweight. They're really cute. And again, if you make them yourself, entirely customizable. You can put gold leaf, silver leaf, bronze leaf on the clay before you bake it. You can choose whatever color you want. You can put luster dust on it. You can make them shiny. You can make them matte. The possibilities are endless. You can make studs, dangly, rainbows, triangles, rectangles, ri literally whatever you want it to be. I actually made clay pins instead of clay jewelry, like necklaces or anything. So that's another option if you're just wanting to play around with some clay. I actually love just to clip on a pin on the tip of a collar. I think it looks really, really classic and chic and also a fun way to bring some personality into an outfit. I have like a little cup of hot chocolate that I used to put on jackets or bags in the winter or like a little fox pin, which would look so cute if you made like ones that had a pointy face so that it fit perfectly on like the ends of a collar. That'd be really cute. Or you can even do one with like a chain detail. Connecting the two together would also be super cute. So yeah, the possibilities are really endless here. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you try out some of these projects. I've done a lot of these things myself. Some of them are a bit more time consuming than others. Some of them take a bit more practice than others. But I think, you know, there's no time like the present to learn a new skill. Now, of course, you do not have to and should not feel guilty if this is not something that you want to do or you just don't have the time or interest in learning something new. Honestly, 
you do you. I'm just assuming that if you clicked on this video, you are interested in trying some new and exciting projects. So I hope you guys do some of these projects, and if you do, I would love to see them. So tag me in your Instagram and Twitter posts. I will be checking them out if you do. Anyway, I love you guys so, so much. Don't forget, it costs nothing to be kind, and I'll see you next week.